Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today we're going to have a look at a name brand lead acid battery charger. This is the NOCO Genius 2 charger. It works on 12 volt lead acid batteries and it'll also deal with 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's got a 2 amp charging current. Before we get into the meat of this video, I just want to mention that if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Questions and comments are always welcome. The feedback is appreciated and it helps me figure out where to focus my activity. One of the reasons that I'm looking at this charger, if you've seen some of my other videos, is I'm on a little bit of a mission, I guess, to try to figure out the best way to charge one of these sort of typical smaller kinds of lead acid batteries. These are sealed lead acid batteries. Also, uh, sometimes they're called AGM batteries because of their construction. And these are the kind of batteries that you'll find typically in a UPS or, or some other small device. And I'm trying to find a way to charge these batteries outside the UPS in a way that is safe and won't really diminish their lifespan. And so I've tried a number of off-brand chargers and generally have not been too thrilled with their performance, although there's been one or two that I've been happy with. But there have been a couple of requests from people to test one of the major brands that produce chargers as opposed to a lot of the cheaper knockoff brands, if you'll say. I figured, okay, NOCO is one of the more well-known brands, so I got this model. Now, the reason I focused on getting something with uh, two amps as opposed to something that could put out a higher amperage is, first off, I already have a few other chargers that put out more current, but these batteries, right, there's a maximum charging current that you can apply to a lead acid battery in terms of how you charge it, uh, as long if you're not planning to try to fast charge it, and that maximum charge current is 0.3 times the capacity. And so the capacity of this battery, for example, is 9 amp hours. And so 0.3 times 9 amp hours gives us a maximum charge current of about 2.7 amps. So if we try to charge this faster than 2.7 amps, that might be reducing the lifespan of the battery. And so we don't want to do that. 2 amps is the right size for the kind of charging that I'm aiming to get towards. And so that's why I've chosen this particular model. Let's get into the box now. This is all nicely sealed. Fortunately, the plastic wrap comes off fairly quickly and easily. Get that out of the way. And Yeah. Opens up like that. Kind of brittle paper here. Oh, I guess I was supposed to pull it out at the bottom. Okay. Comes out at the bottom. A little accessory guide to make sure that we know what we can buy. And nicely situated in the middle. This is a nice small module. It's one of the smaller chargers that I've got. Some foam here. And of course, all kinds of stuff underneath here. Okay. We've got a cable here. Not an SAE connector, there's some complaints about those. So just a connector and that will go into this connector. And of course, there is a difference between the two sides. So there's sort of a polarization here to make sure that we don't get it wrong. So that'll connect and also in the box, there's a little mounting strap. So you screw this into the frame of the car and then you can strap the uh, device in here. So 
So that'll strap in like so. And that way it has a nice little home under the hood of your car if that's what you want to do. A couple of things to note here. One of the things that's sort of important to me is that this unit has an ETL certification. And that's pretty uncommon in the third party or, or second tier brands. The second tier brands don't have either an ETL certification or a UL certification. That's typically something we only tend to see in the somewhat more expensive top tier brands. That's everything in the box other than safety and warranty instructions in the box. And in order to get the operating manual, we need to go and follow this QR code. I guess I'll have to do that to figure out how it works. Let's have a quick examination of the unit itself. It's got a polarized plug to plug it into the mains there. And then it's got a plug for the battery charging circuit. And this is also polarized. You can see that there are different shaped connectors there to just keep uh, the positive and negative separated or oriented properly. There is a set of charge cables that were in the box, and these also have those sort of shaped connectors to make sure that we can't connect this incorrectly. We've got some very nice solid clips here, and they're, the clips are attached to the cable. These are screwed in, and apparently, according to the instructions, you can unscrew these and then use the connector without the clips, you can just use the ring terminals there. And it's probably a little difficult to tell, but these screws are mounted at a bit of an angle so that you can get your screwdriver blade in there as opposed to struggling to figure out how to get the screwdriver in there. And then there's a fuse here in the cable, and this is a two amp charger, so it's not surprising that the fuse here is set to four amps. It really shouldn't have to ever go anywhere near that high but the connector is fused in case we go way over somehow if there's too much current flow in the system. So that's fused and this clamps on quite tightly and that should stay watertight. This is the test setup. What I have is the NOCO up here and it's plugged in, but it, the circuit is not connected yet fully. And we've got the battery here and one meter here. This one is measuring voltage and a second meter here is measuring current. And because this is going to be running for quite some time, I've got them both set so they don't power off on their own. And we're not seeing any current here yet because the circuit hasn't been completed. One of the ways in which the NOCO differs a little from other chargers that I've tried out, and you'll see this in a second, is that it starts out when it's plugged in, in standby mode, and you can see that lit up there. It doesn't go into charge mode until it's actually turned on, if you will, by pressing the mode button. And I will go through those and I'll explain what these symbols mean as uh, the test starts to run. And so that's quite interesting. So right now it's in standby mode. Let's connect the circuit. So the circuit is complete here. And so now we can see a little bit of current every once in a while. It's doing maybe a little bit of sensing and the, the voltage this is the voltage coming out of the battery at this point, as opposed to the voltage going into the battery because the NOCO isn't on yet. And so that's a nice feature because with a lot of other units, as soon as the circuit is complete, like it is now, the unit just starts charging <laughs> right off the bat. And there's, there's no opportunity to kind of, uh, to, to sort of get your act together, if you will. Now, in order to start charging, I'm going to be pressing the mode button and it's going to go through these modes. The first one being 12 volt, the second one being 12 volt AGM, and the third one being 12 volt lithium. It won't go into the 6 volt mode unless 
the mode button is held down for a few seconds, and that's to prevent inadvertent uh, triggering of the six volt mode. And then there's uh, a final mode called a force mode. And in the force mode, you have to hold the mode button down for five seconds, and that uh, forces the charging, if you will, of a battery that's almost dead. The NOCO won't charge a dead battery unless you force it to do so because it removes some of the other built-in protections to prevent dangerous situations from occurring. Now I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go quickly into the AGM mode because this battery is an AGM battery. So you can see that now that's on, now that's on, and nothing has started happening yet. The current is still zero, and now it's started to react. And so the current has come up to half an amp, and we can see this uh, point in the scale has lit up, and it's pulsing red. That means that charging is active. We can see the current now has come up to one and a half amps. And so it is in the charge mode, and this is going to go on for quite a while now. And what I'll be doing for most of this is I'll be uh, running a time-lapse sequence, and I'll compress out a lot of details. Now you can see the current has come up to 1.9 amps, and the voltage is at 12 volts. I'm not expecting to see this go much higher than 1.9 amps, but the voltage should rise here as it is. You can, over this short period of time, the voltage has risen. This is what's called the constant current mode. The current will stay fairly constant at this high level until the voltage starts to reach the maximum charge voltage for a 12 volt lead acid battery. In some cases, that's around 13.8 volts. In some cases, 14 volts, 14 and a half, 14.8. We'll see what happens. According to the instruction manual for this unit, this should top out at around 14.8 volts. We'll see uh, if that is indeed the case. But for now, we can see that the current is now staying fairly constant the voltage is rising as the current is being injected into the unit, and we have the pulsing light here. Just while we're getting started, a couple of things that I'll show. The manual for this unit is much more informative than many other units. While other units really kind of do uh, very little in terms of specifying what the particulars are of the charge cycle. NOCO is very specific. And so I'm going to put up in the overlay the charge voltages and charge currents that are published in the manual just so that you can see what exactly they are expecting and what we should be expecting to see later on as the maximum charge voltage and charge current. That, and that differs based on whether we're in the 12 volt mode, the 12 volt AGM mode, the 12 volt lithium mode, the six volt mode, or the force mode. And NOCO is very upfront about the behavior, the expected behavior of the unit. So that's very nice to see. A couple of other things that I'll point out while the charging is going on. This, of course, is the 25% lead. This is the 50% lead, the 75% lead, and the 100% lead. And these will light up and they'll either pulse or be solid, depending upon where we are in the charge cycle. Lastly, these symbols here are not meaningless. These will light up depending upon whether one of the conditions is met. We've seen this particular one light up. That's the standby uh, indicator. This one is the battery voltage too high indicator. And so if the battery is sort of putting out too much voltage, 
then this will light up. This one indicates that there might be a short in the battery. And then this final one indicates that we may have uh, reversed the polarity of the clips. Asides from the standby indicator, the fact that these are all off is a good thing. These should only light up in an exceptional error condition. If the charger temperature gets too high, because perhaps too much current has gone through the unit or some other situation, maybe it's uh, in the sunlight or something like that, if the charger is too high, then all of these, except for the standby, all of these will start to flash. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shift over into time-lapse mode because the charging cycle is gonna take about three hours and I don't think you wanna watch a three hour long video, but it is very handy to be able to capture very specific segments from the charge cycle. And so I'm gonna do that by using time-lapse to compress the charge cycle as much as possible so that we can see the interesting portions of the charge cycle where certain state changes take place. In this time lapse, we see the NOCO Genius 2 go through four distinct charging phases. Each phase has a specific constant charging current and a specific maximum voltage. The first phase charge current is just below 2 amps and runs to a maximum voltage of 14.4 volts. In the second phase, the charge current drops to 1.5 amps and runs to a maximum voltage of 14.5 volts. The third phase brings the charge current to half an amp and charges until 14.6 volts. In the fourth and final phase, the charge current is a very modest 200 milliamps and runs until a voltage of 14.9 volts is reached. This phase takes several hours due to the low charge current. The conventional approach to charging lead acid cells is to employ an initial constant current charge at a current that is no more than 0.3 times the battery capacity. This phase runs until the voltage reaches the maximum charge voltage, typically between 14.8 and 14.9 volts. Charging then shifts into a constant voltage phase where the maximum charge voltage stays constant. The current drops steadily as the battery saturates. When the current drops below about 3% of the maximum, the charger enters the final float phase. The voltage is reduced to about 13.5 volts, and the system can remain in this state indefinitely. Now that we have seen the full charge cycle, we can see that the NOCO charger employs a novel approach for lead acid charging. The charging is performed via a series of constant current stages, with each stage taking place at a successively lower constant current. Furthermore, the NOCO does not make use of a float charge phase at all. It turns off the charge current completely at the end of the charge cycle. This approach was likely chosen to allow the same charger to charge both lead acid and lithium cells. Lithium cells do not accommodate a float voltage in the way that lead acid cells do. In summary, this is a top-notch charger. The charge voltage is very well controlled. The higher charge voltage above 14.7 volts is only applied during the final 200 milliamp charge phase. This is a more gentle approach to charging the sluggish lead acid chemistry. It takes longer to finalize the charge but will ultimately deliver a longer overall battery life. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.